In this video, I'll show you how to make a simple but beautiful nano aquarium for some tiny cherry shrimp. I'm going to use this nano 20cm cube aquarium. It's made from OptiWhite glass and it's already got a self leveling mat on the bottom. I'll put a link to this tank plus all the other materials that I'll be using in the description. The first thing I want to do is get the background in place. I've cleaned the glass and now I'm placing on a frosted film. I can now use a plastic card to squidge out all the excess water. All that's left to do now is to use a sharp blade to trim it down around the edges of the tank. You certainly don't need a background but I always think it makes the tank look a lot cleaner. As for the lighting for this tank I've got this relatively low powered LED light. Now let's start building the ecosystem. Before pouring in the substrate I'm going to place in this mesh bag of crushed lava rock. This will not only provide a place for beneficial bacteria but it'll also mean I don't need to use as much substrate. As for the substrate I'm going to use some Tropica Aquasoil. In a small tank like this one a 3 litre bag will be more than enough. I'm using my hand to slope the aquasoil up towards the back which will help create more depth. I will add some more aquasoil soon but firstly I'm going to place in some root tabs. Adding these will really help ensure that the plants inside this tank have enough nutrients to thrive. Instead of pushing them down into the substrate I'm opening up the capsules and pouring them inside. After pouring in about 3 or 4 capsules I can now cap it off with even more aquasoil. With the substrate complete let's get to work on the hardscape. I've got a good selection of black lava rock which I think will be perfect for this nano aquarium. The scape I've got in mind is lava rocks on the left and right side of the tank with a narrow gap down the middle. I'll then turn the narrow gap into a sand path which will hopefully add a great level of detail to the tank. I'm happy with the placement of these two rocks so what I'm going to do now is add even more substrate in behind them. By doing this I'll hopefully be able to create a great sense of depth and make this nano aquarium look much deeper than it actually is. You can now see that the narrow path down the centre is starting to take shape. I will add some more substrate and one more layer of rocks before moving on. As the aquasoil is sloped up so steep it does want to roll down towards the front but giving it a good spray down helps it stay in place. I'm really liking how it's looking so far and I can already see my idea taking shape. I do think a few spiderwood branches will add a nice contrast to the black lava rock. After a bit of experimentation and super glue, here's how the right side looks. I like how it resembles roots growing over the lava rock. Now I'm going to try and do the same on the left side. Once I'm happy with the placement of the wood, I'm tearing off a small piece of tissue and placing it in between the wood and lava rock. I can then soak the tissue with some liquid type super glue. It dries really quickly and forms a strong bond which holds the wood in place. Once the glue dries, it becomes inert, making it 100% shrimp safe. I'm using multiple pieces of wood to create the illusion that they're one root system growing down over the rocks. I'm really happy with how it's looking but the white glue marks certainly need to be covered up. To do this I'm simply applying some super glue and then sprinkling on some crushed black lava rock. This is a super easy and quick way of creating a seamless joint between the wood and the rocks. By gluing everything together it's made the hardscape nice and sturdy so it's not at risk of being knocked over. I do feel like it's missing some small detailed branches so I'm going to add them first before moving on to the planting. That's looking much better so let's start bringing this mini aquarium to life. These here are some pots of Monte Carlo which I've propagated and grown myself. I think this plant will look great in the foreground and in small patches on the left and right side of the sand path. I'm taking the plant and splitting it up into smaller individual sections. I can then take some long tweezers and plant it down into the substrate. I find it much easier to plant when the water level is pretty much at the same level as the substrate. These small patches will grow and spread in no time at all. Next up I want to add a really nice pop of colour on the left and right side of the scape. I've got a bunch of Rotala cuttings from another tank that would do this perfectly. 
I want these to grow nice and tall which will hopefully make the sand path look like it's in a deep valley. For this aquarium I'm really trying to keep the plants in as simple as possible and only use a few species. Don't get me wrong, tanks with loads of different plant species look amazing but I certainly think there's a place for more simple setups like this one. The last plant I'm adding is a few patches of Bucephalandra. I'm able to wedge the majority of them in gaps between the hardscape but I am using a small amount of superglue to attach a piece up on this lava rock. Now the planting's complete, I'm giving the tank a light spray down before pouring in the sand down the centre. I'm starting at the top and gradually making my way down to the front. To make an effective sand path, there's one very important thing that you need to do. You need to make sure that it's the widest at the front with it gradually getting narrower and narrower as it makes its way to the back of the tank. This simple trick adds a great sense of depth as it makes the path look as if it's going off into the distance. Small pieces of lava rock on either side add to the detail as well as some crushed lava rock sprinkled on top. I absolutely love the depth that the path brings to the tank and I'm really happy with how the hardscapes turned out. Now let's move on and install the filter. I'm going to use this small hang on back filter and I want it to sit in this back corner. The intake however is way too long so I am going to need to make a few customizations. I'm starting by cutting off this small bottom piece which will allow me to attach the intake back on after cutting down the tube. Now I'm placing the filter on the tank and measuring out where I need to cut off. I can now take the small piece that I cut off and glue it back on. I'm making sure to only glue it on halfway as the other half is where the intake will attach onto. Now the glue is dry, I can simply push the intake back in place followed by the sponge and place it back inside the tank. It fits in perfectly and it's really discreet which is much better than having a filter inside the tank which would take away from the overall scape. Before filling up the tank, I am going to make a quick change to the media inside the filter. I'm taking out the small cartridge it came with and replacing it with some ceramic rings and filter foam. Now there's a much greater area for beneficial bacteria and it's super easy to clean out. Now I'm going to quickly install the CO2 system. If you haven't got access to CO2, don't worry as all the plants inside this setup will still grow great without it. The main difference is that they'll grow faster, more compact and the reds will have a bit more colour to them. I've already got a CO2 system which is super easy to set up in my tanks so that's why I'm using it. Now it's finally time to fill the tank up with water. A small piece of paper towel ensures that the water doesn't destroy the scape. All I use for my setups is dechlorinated tap water. All that's left to do is to turn the filter on and let the tank grow in and establish before introducing the shrimp. Six weeks have passed and I'm glad to say that this nano aquarium has established really nicely. All the plants have grown in just how I hoped they would and the tank is almost unrecognisable from a month and a half ago. My favourite has got to be the dense forest of Rotala on the left and right side of the scape. I've trimmed and replanted the stems multiple times to achieve this look and I'm really happy with it. The stems have grown a really healthy root system that go all the way down to the bottom of the tank. As I'm sure you remember, I did initially have CO2 running in this setup. I decided to remove it a few weeks ago as the plants were growing so fast that I couldn't keep up with the maintenance. Although the CO2 does help, it goes to show that you can still have a nice healthy setup without it. As for algae, there's some growing on the wood and rocks, but it's really not a problem. The shrimp will likely help clean this up in no time at all. Talking about the shrimp, I think it's about time to introduce them to their new home. These are red cherry shrimp and they're perfect for a small setup like this one. Hopefully there's a mix of males and females so they can start breeding, but if not, I'll introduce a few more from one of my other setups. After six weeks of having nothing in the tank, it's really nice to see these little guys running around and exploring. I want to hear your thoughts. Should I add anything else to this setup or leave it as shrimp only? Let me know in the comments. 
I absolutely love the simplicity of this setup and the fact that I only used three species of plants yet it still looks like a miniature jungle. I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.